I want to start off by giving thanks to God for the opportunity to be up here to speak to you guys today. Uh, I can think of many reasons why I shouldn't be here, and I give thanks to God for preserving me and seeing me through each and every one of them. I want to start with Philippians 1 6. It says, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. I have to admit that when I was approached about giving a testimony, I had reservations. I had never really thought much about how I came to know the Lord. I guess that I had always assumed that testimonies were for people who had these awesome redemption stories about overcoming unimaginable situations. And for me, my life story hasn't been all that special. Unlike many of the brethren here, I wasn't brought up in a Christian environment. Both of my parents were unbelievers and were heavily involved in alcohols and alcohol and drugs. When I was about five or six years old, my parents went through some financial hardships. We ended up having to move in with one of my dad's coworkers. During that time, they continued in that lifestyle, and at some point due to adultery, at some point due to adultery, my parents had to separate and my dad moved out. Shortly afterwards, the environment produced both verbal and physical abuse towards me and my brother and sister. My brother and I ended up going to live with our father while our sister stayed behind with our mom. From the age of seven to about nine, my dad working long hours in the oil fields wasn't home a lot. So after school, my brother and I basically had run of the streets with no supervision. There were several times where we got into a lot of trouble. We did a lot of things that even to this day I am ashamed of. And it was around that time that myself and one of my childhood friends had met someone who lived near our neighborhood. He was about 16 or 17 years old, and we later discovered that he was known by the local police as a pedophile. We were befriended by him, and he took advantage of us, and he molested us both. This was a dark secret that I had kept to myself for nearly 15 years. Shortly after, in 1993, my dad, along with my brother and myself, moved out to Vernon, Texas, where our grandparents had lived. My grandfather and my, my grandmother were devout biblical believers that attended the local Church of Christ just outside of town. It was because of them and their influence that my brother and I were first introduced to the Word of God. I had met some new friends who went to the same church, and in the summer of 1994, I was able to go to a church camp for the first time. It was there that I began to learn the significance of Jesus laying down his life for the sins of the world, all of my sins included. I confided in one of my camp counselors my desire to become a Christian, and we prayed together that Jesus would come into my heart. I had never felt so safe and happy and loved in my entire life than I did at that moment. I was given my own Bible and began reading and studying. I remember the joy I felt when I was able to memorize all the names of the books in the Bible alphabetically, and even greater joy when I was able to memorize them in order of placement. Several months had went by, and a couple that my dad had known in California moved to Texas. They ended up staying with us for about a year. It wasn't long after their arrival that I began to realize they weren't very good people. While our dad was at work, they would stay home and watch us. They began to verbally and eventually physically abuse us. We were warned almost daily that we, if we had ever said anything, our dad would be next and he would get it worse than us. They had complete control over us. We were beaten with fly swatters, belts, rulers, and at one point when my brother popped off, he ended up having a glass plate smashed over his head. We were so afraid to tell our dad what was going on, and they were so good at pretending to be kind and innocent. Finally, one day, I had gained enough courage to speak up, and I told the man that they could not hurt me anymore because I was saved by Jesus. The man grew more angry than I had ever seen him before, and in the past, than I had ever seen him before in the past. And he took a butter knife out of the drawer and held it over the hot flame of the stove. He grabbed me by the throat and held the knife to my face, forcing me to stick out my tongue. 
He warned me that if I had ever talked back to him again, he would make it so that I could never speak again. As he released his grip from my throat, he laughingly said that Jesus couldn't protect me from him. Thankfully, my brother couldn't bear it anymore and finally told our dad about what was going on. My dad quickly called the police and had them kicked out of our house immediately. I was so terrified by the ordeal and believed everything they had filled my head with that I stopped going to church and reading my Bible. Not long after that, in the summer of 95, we ended up moving back to California in the city of Fresno. I was bullied in school and began to hang out with a bad crowd just to keep from being beaten up. About a year later, my mom was released from a drug rehabilitation center and started attending a little church in Taft, California. With my dad's blessing, I moved in with her and started going to that church with her. I got back into praying and reading my Bible again, and on June 18, 1999, I was baptized. Soon after, I got involved with the local church or youth group and eventually became a youth leader. That joy that I had felt when I first came to know the Lord as a child had returned, and everything was going really well for me. My relationship with my mom was amazing, and I had this family of fellow believers who shared the same love for Jesus that I had. I didn't think anything else could ruin it. Our congregation grew and grew, and eventually we had to move out of the small building, which wasn't, it wasn't much bigger than the building we were blessed with this last year. Without much money, we ended up getting a large tent and had it set up in the parking lot outside, where we had services held for over two years. The congregation continued to grow so fast that we ended up starting a building fund which raised enough money to purchase a large piece of land just outside of town, where eventually they built a very large facility, rebranding it as a World Mission Center. Unfortunately, I fear that the rapid growth in members and focus being drawn away from the, mem from the message of the gospel towards cultivating their newfound popularity became their stumbling block and caused them to depart from their first love. In due time, many programs and ministries began to be neglected, and a number of people, including myself, after no longer being fed spiritually, had walked away. We had become exactly like the type of church that we were always warned to avoid. Sadly, I was left feeling like all churches were the same, and I left it all behind. For nearly five years, I lived only for myself. I began partying, drinking, doing drugs. I routinely got into fights. I was reckless and I didn't care who I hurt. It was nearly five years of darkness, which culminated when my cousin and her husband were murdered during a drug deal. I immediately quit using drugs because of that, though I still drank on occasion. But as the Father's will would have it, through a series of seemingly random events, I began talking to this woman over the phone this woman who would later become my wife. Ironically, we didn't like each other at all at first, and it still amazes me how God works in people. Here's this Christian woman who is strong-willed and firm in her faith, and then you've got this backsliding drunkard like me living for myself. And yet as time went on and we continued to talk over the phone, something unexplainable began to change in me. She told me about this group of believers in Joplin, Missouri, and what they believed and taught. I admit, it piqued my interest. I thought to myself, you mean there's actually a church here in America that is one, not associated with any known denomination. Two, they preach and teach directly from scripture without requiring the aid of any self-help materials. And three, which I found most interesting, I was surprised to learn that they had the young ones in the same assembly with them learning together. This was surprising and very strange to me because I have never been exposed to this type of environment before. As I, began, as I became more and more interesting in hearing about what was going on here in Joplin, one thing I've, I've come to admire was her blunt, never beat around the bush character as she explained to me and backed it up with scripture that my lifestyle was unacceptable to God. She was absolutely right and being convicted, I repented. As our conversations continued, my desire to come to Joplin increased and we began to grow closer to each other. I opened up my heart and poured out my life story to her and told her things about my past that I had never told anyone. 
What started out as this bitter disdain we had for each other grew into what I can only describe as a genuine love. And in February of 2005, I began making the necessary arrangements to come to Missouri. On the 15th of April, I got off the bus at the local Greyhound station at 2 o'clock in the morning where I met Sister Becca for the first time. Later that evening, I had attended my first Hungry Saints meeting at the Word of Truth Fellowship, where I was introduced to the brethren I've now come to love so dearly, who have been wonderful ministers in my life. And so I must confess that my walk has not always been easy. At times, it has felt like a roller coaster of ups and downs. There have been times of stumbling, times of discouragement and hopelessness. Over the course of my lifetime, I've made a lot of mistakes along the way. I've struggled in many areas, from having to overcome bitterness, self-doubt, and inadequacies, to having to unlearn false teachings and putting away the things that I hadn't initially thought to be sinful, to having the boldness to speak on the true things that I've come to understand. These past 12 years have been a period of learning and reconciliation for me. Oftentimes, I had been humbled but not learned humility, corrected but not received understanding, taught about love and kindness but hadn't experienced either in my life. Ever since I moved to Joplin, I've come to know and understand all these things and am learning and experiencing more and more every day. When I think of all of you and all the brethren who I've met over the years, I can see Christ in each and every one of you. It's a beautiful experience when you can see Christ in those who are dear to your heart. And as wonderful as that is, it does not compare to how much of Christ I have seen in my wife. Her tenderness and compassion towards others, thinking not of herself. She knows all of my darkest secrets and the details of my past, yet she has a deep love for me and sees only the man I have come to be today. She has been my comforter in times of hardship and despair, my caregiver when I am sick, and my rock whenever I am discouraged. She has believed in me whenever I didn't even believe in myself and she doesn't hesitate to let me know when I'm acting like a fool. She has stayed by my side, ready and willing to help me along and guide my way. Her love and desire to please the Lord and sacrifice her time to help others is truly a depiction of the nature of Christ. She has brought peace to the chaos that was my life and has shown me the true meaning of love and patience, which I can testify that before then, I had very little of either. She has been a great minister in my life and showed me how to be a better man and a believer, not just in word, but action as well, whether she knows this or not. I am ever thankful, ever thankful that God set me on a path and put such a woman in my life. These past few weeks since being asked to give my testimony have been truly wonderful. Until recently, I had honestly never taken the time to think about the past or remember everything that I have been through. Though there were a lot of very dark moments in my life, I recognize and give thanks to God for bringing me through it all. I used to wonder about the what ifs a lot, like what if I had been brought up in a Christian home and what if I had learned this or that sooner? Where would I be spiritually and how much farther along would I have been on my journey? But now, just as Brother Marty had confirmed in his testimony, I realize how wrong it is to think that way. God has put me where I am at the time of his own choosing, and I believe that I have a living testimony in a ministry to reach out to other people who have been in the same situation as I have and experienced the same kinds of hardships that I have gone through. Because if someone like me who has lived such a life that I have can be brought out of the pit and redeemed from a life full of sin, nobody is beyond reach, beyond the reach of the Lord of salvation. In closing, brethren, I am, a rem I am reminded of a poem by Mary Stevenson titled Footprints in the Sand. I, certainly, I am certain that many of you know this poem by heart, but for me it has become a perfect description of my own life. Footprints in the Sand. One night I had a dream. I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the sky flashed scenes from my life. And for each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of my life had flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that many times along the path of my life, there was only one set of footprints, 
I also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and saddest times in my life. This really bothered me and I questioned, questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me all the way. But I have noticed during the most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't, know, I don't understand why when I needed you the most, you would leave me. The Lord replied, my precious child, I love you and would never leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Thank you, brother.